Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and I got a really fun project for you this week. We're doing salt flowers. Oh. Ah. We have Keenan's here. Keenan's, Keenan's here. Both of them are here. Working the cameras. <laughs> and we will be doing this project in four steps. So our very first step is we are going to put down our water, our color, and our salt all in one swoop. Wow. Second step is we're going to spread that color to the rest of that paper, get that paper nice and wet, and drop in some green for our leaves. Step three, after it's dried, is we're going to put in our leaves on top of that so they're nice and sharp. And our very last step, step four, is just finishing details, you know, any adjustments you want to make, tightening it up. Nice. We are using five colors for this project. So our very first color is rose red. Our second color is orchid, personal favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. Our third color is Tahoe blue. Mm. I do like Tahoe blue. Me too. Our fourth color is burnt orange, a favorite of mine as well. And our last color is lemon yellow. Now we are using the Let's Make Art brand watercolor paint called Dandelion Paint Co. They're a liquid watercolor dye based, which means they're super, super vibrant, fun to play with, but fugitive, which means they will fade in direct sunlight. You mean like Harrison Ford? Exactly. Thank you. We call these Harrison Ford paints. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to use three paint brushes. I have our go-to brushes, our round two and our round six. And then I'm adding a round 12 for this project. And that's just because we're painting big. I want to be able to work quickly and fill this space faster. And I want to introdu introduce you guys to new tools. Who doesn't want to learn more? I'm also using salt for this project. Now you can use whatever salt you have at home, but my personal preference of salt is this McCormick Sea Salt Grinder. McCormick, do you need a, a brand? A ambassador. Ambassador? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll do this. <laughs> Sarah can, can display Listen, it? I really like the salt, but um, I think it works really well because it's, um, doesn't have iodide and it's a grinder, which means I get different size granules of salt, uh, which I find exciting because I get variation. Does McCormick paint with us? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Because that would be awkward if they, they didn't. They made this actually for painting. You find it in the food section, but like. It says steak next to it, but no, that's what <laughs> no, it was no. for. <laughs> paint. And we are using our Let's Make Art watercolor paper. This is a wood pulp paper. Please make sure you paint on the more textured side. And I'm using Holbein soft tape to tape it down. There was a question in the group that was like, Sarah uses the Holbein soft tape, but I don't know if she really likes it or if she's just trying to sell it, which I found hilarious. That is really funny. And I do love it. I actually love this I mean, you were tape. using it just a little bit before we started to sell it. Yeah. Like, I feel like we started to sell it because you're like, the people need this. Yes. Yes. I discovered this tape. Yes. Thanks partly to Keenan. Well, when and you said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, it's, it's my favorite watercolor tape that I found. It's so gentle, but it keeps a crisp line and I have not found a, a comparable tape with the quality. So I really do love it. Okay. We're going to do our oath and then we're going to get right into painting. Nice. You ready? Ready. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise to not compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. Love starting that way, because this is just about exploring. Now, this is the first project in our wild growth watercolor box, and I love it because it's just free and fun. If mm. you did our salt trees tutorials with us, which we did, I believe, at the end of 2021, that one was just like, you paint, you play, and you make something out of it. No stress. And I want you guys to fall in love with the process of watercolor. It's when you fall in love with the actual process that you keep going. Because if you tie all of your value into who you are as an artist with an outcome and just one outcome, then you're not giving yourself a chance. We all start somewhere. And we paint because it makes our life exciting and vibrant and fun and we can be curious and explore things and try things and if you can fall in love with what that feels like then you will be an artist for all of your life because you won't stop and when you don't stop you get better painting is a skill it just takes consistency and practice so 
this project, we are all about exploring, falling in love with the process and playing. So let go of all of your expectations and we're gonna get to it. Nice. Um, now, I know I grabbed my paintbrush, but I'm gonna talk a little more. Um, this project, I just wanna give you a heads up, is gonna turn out different every single time. And I wanna show you all of the times I did this project. There was this time mm -hmm. and this time. Ooh, nice and centers. this time, which is my absolute favorite one, which is why it's the reference photo. Oh. And this one, I tried three flowers. And this one. And this one, I did a lighter color palette, I like, like a that peach. Color. That's Me nice. too. It's so soft and gentle. Yep. Um, so if I were to do this one again, I actually don't think I would use the orchid as much. I think the purple is too vibrant for these peachy greens. Mm. But besides that, I love what's happening here. So I just want to give you a heads up. I don't know what this is going to turn out like. It's going to be a variation of that. And so is yours. That's why it's exciting. That is. Okay. So step one, I'm going to use my round 12. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create circular shapes in the center of my painting, not totally next to each other, kind of diagonal from each other, one larger than the other. And you can just use your hands. Like sometimes it's nice visually to just be like, I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna put one there. Oh, that's useful. And I know that sounds silly, but your, br your brain will create like an implied section. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm gonna take this and I'm just going to do, I'm not doing a perfect circle. I'm doing like a funky shape and I'm lifting my brush because I want there to be white sections, okay? So this is nice and wet. Nice big. And then I'm going to grab orchid and a tiny bit of rose red just for variation in color. And I'm going to drop that color in. Ooh. And it's going to move. I'm going to help it move. And then I'm going to drop in more water just to help that spread out. Oh. And you can drop in more paint. And that I'm working so cool. quickly here. I want you guys to work quick. I want you to make quick decisions. And now I'm gonna take my salt and just right in the middle, grind, okay? Gosh, and if you even wanna like, if you're feeling really edgy, mm -hmm. if you wanna even like drop in more color after that, oh. do it. Like, let's just go wild here. Let's just see what can happen. You got a really cool light swirl that I really hope you don't notice so that you leave it there. <laughs> Don't point it out to me because you I know I'll cover that I up. I know. <laughs> Keenan likes something. Let me change yeah, it. Let me remove it. <laughs> okay. Now, the thing you have to remember with salt is it does not react right away. It really doesn't show its full effect until it's dry. So there's always this element of surprise because you really have no idea what the salt is going to do until your paper is dry, which I find kind of fun because it's always like, I, what is it that Jesse says? Surprise and delight. Oh. Surprise and delight. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to do my second flower. I want it to be a little bit smaller because I want there to be different sizes. Mm. Um, so I'm going to still use my 12, still touching so the colors might bleed, doing a rounded shape, lifting my brush. And it doesn't even have to be perfectly round. It can be like whatever shape you want, as long as it's not geometric. And then I'm gonna take my color. Yeah, geometrics are theories anyway. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Maybe if you wanna do like one clearly a different color, you can mix a little bit more red in there and have like a more pink flower. I'm gonna drop in some water too. So this technique is called wet on wet. And you're, all, you're always gonna get some interesting textures, soft fuzzy edges, like just playing. Oh, that ended up being the same size, but that's okay. And I'm going to put the salt in the middle. And let's do more paint because I just, I really love just dropping it in and seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. I just realized that my energy was like, <sighs> because I was trying to work fast. So I'm just at this point, we're gonna slow down. Oh, okay. I love how I said to make that one smaller and I ended up making it like bigger. 
were the exact same size. It's like continuing like, to grow. Look at this. <laughs> the exact same size. <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, well, if that happens, you can do one of two things. You can leave it. Or if you want to be like, no, 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 I really want that to be smaller. You can take your paper towel and just kind of like tighten it in. So you're just kind of lifting color up along the edge. Mm. Okay. So even though the circumference, like it really is still the same size, this one starts to feel a little bit smaller because all of the value and the color is smaller. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Can we just pause before I add step two and look and see what's already happening over here? On the, the left? Yes. Yes. And I actually am gonna do a little bit more salt over here. Now again, is that enough salt? Is that too much salt? I don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Okay, step two, I'm still gonna use my round 12, and I'm pretty much just going to roughly paint the rest of my paper using water. And because it's still a little bit wet, when I add water and kind of paint around it, the pinks and the purples are gonna bleed out. That's okay, I'm okay with that. So I'm just taking my 12, and again, I'm working quickly here. And if you want to like lift up your brush so there's some white sections, you can. And if you see that your flower is bleeding too much, you can embrace it and be like, cool, cool flower, you do you. Or if you wanna like, you can like push it back into the flower to just kind of control it a little bit. Now I'm not picking up a ton of water and you can actually see, well maybe not, but it's kind of like I'm getting a rough brush stroke on some of my painting. Oh, whoa, look at that. See how that went? Yes. I'm gonna leave that, that's cool. Keep it. Keeping it. Feels smoky. This one I'm gonna clean up just a little. So I'm just kind of like picking it up, pushing it back towards that flower and being like, just stay over there for a little bit. Corralling the paint. Yes. Okay, now while it's wet like this, I'm going to drop in a little bit of green. So I'm gonna mix green using my three colors. I have blue, orange, and yellow. I just grabbed a little bit of each. And while it's wet like this, I just kinda wanna like, using my 12, drop in some green. And it's gonna bleed out and diffuse everywhere, that's okay. That's kinda what we want, because we're trying to like, create the illusion of layers of leaves. So these leaves are kind of like the out of focus ones that are farther away, that kind of thing. Or your glasses are off. <laughs> yes, or your glasses are off. And you can see here I added a little bit of blue. So I have three different greens going on over here. I just like variation in color. If you want to stick with one color green, you can. If you want to like That's our, that's our tornado. Siren. Siren. It's, a, it's the first it's Wednesday of the month. Every first Wednesday they do a test. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. And we'll do some over here. Now the longer you wait for your paper to dry, the less your leaves are going to bleed out. So if you go to your paper to paint your leaves and you discover that your paper has dried and this green isn't like bleeding out or softening or anything, um, you can just re-wet your paper, not a big deal, and then put the green in. And there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to where I'm putting in this green. I'm kind of just looking at the reference photo and saying, here's a green chunk, here's a green chunk, and here's a green chunk. But this is your painting, so if you're like, actually, I want a chunk here, or I want one over here, it's your painting. You can do that. Yeah, do that. Okay. Okay. Those are wild. Yeah, look at this. I just am so in love with whatever happened right here. So I love the one on the right because it 
almost looks like it's stretching out and tearing in certain spots. It mm. looks incredible. What I love about the edge of this one on the right too is it reminds me of, you know how some flowers have such delicate petals? Yes. They're like tissue paper thin. Yep. That's, that's what this is giving me right now. Mm -hmm. This one kind of is like curly. Yeah, that's why I say wild. Ooh. It's almost got a face. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our paper is totally dry before we um, do anything else. So I'm gonna use a heat gun. If you don't have a craft heat gun, uh, get a snack, take a break. And I'll just be here. <laughs> Staring, <laughs> not at the painting. <laughs> Okay, another thing that you can do while this is drying is you can mix your greens. So I'm gonna turn my palette so hopefully you guys can see it a little bit better. I totally accidentally dumped my burnt orange. Do you see how much paint is on there? Lots. You don't need to put that much paint on your palette. It just kinda got there. All right, so the nice thing, the reason why I added burnt orange to this mixture is because it's gonna desaturate whatever greens that we have. So if I take my blue and my yellow and just mix those straight across, I'm gonna get a super, super vibrant green, a gorgeous green, okay? And I'm gonna leave that. So I have one green here, and then I'm gonna take some of that green, move it over here, and grab a little burnt orange. And that's gonna turn it brown. Look at that brown. Which is but it's secretly like, the hardest color to mix. <laughs> but it's like a brown green. Like I would say this is still reading more green than brown, but it's, look how desaturated this one is compared to this one. So that's a great color. I'm gonna keep that color too. And then I'm, I wanna do a more like turquoisey green. So I'm gonna do blue and I'm gonna grab some yellow, but not as much yellow. And now I have this gorgeous turquoise color. Okay, and I'm gonna do one more. I want like a really nice yellow green. So, if you just wanna put yellow right next to it, you can. Can they see it here? Not yet, I was gonna say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but what's happening up there in that burnt orange? Right here? Yeah, that looks amazing. Yeah, Look at the that marble. Cool? I messed it up, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> that happens often. But now I have four really nice greens to choose from. And I always look at color mixing as an opportunity to add interest, variation, and uniqueness to my painting. That's why I'm not so heavy on mixing formulas because this is your opportunity as an artist to make your own decisions. Is that really hard when you're first starting out and you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing? Yes, it is, it's painful, but it's a good kind of pain because that's the fastest way to learn is for you guys just to do it. So, um, I actually wanna mix one more green. I want a super dark value green, like almost black. So I'm gonna see what happens when I mix all the colors together. So I have a green, like this was my yellow, but I touched it with blue, so I turned it, it turned into this really bright green. And I'm gonna grab some more blue and I'm gonna grab some orange, and I'm gonna grab just a little bit of red. Okay, that's nice. That's like brown, that's like actual brown. Yeah, that's a good color. And then let's grab some blue, cause I still want it to read more on the green side. There we go, look at that. Look at that green. That's a good green. Yeah, so now I have just a plethora of colors to choose from. Okay, and now my paper is dry. So I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna to move to my six. And the reason why I think these projects are so fun is because you're able to look at it and then make decisions based off of the accidental and surprise elements that you couldn't totally plan. So for me, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, my greens that I put in this way kind of are going to the right. So I'm gonna follow that. When I, when I add my stems and leaves on top, I'm gonna to have them lean to the right. Um, this one feels really good. This one's a little bit longer. Um, and I'm just thinking compositionally here, there's actually a pretty big gap 
right here. So as I put in these leaves, I'm gonna think about that gap and, and decide, is that creating a distraction to my painting? Do I need to put something there or do I not? You don't have to have all the answers right away. You can make decisions as you go. So that's what we're gonna do. Sweet. So I have my six. I'm going to grab some green, whatever color green. And I'm gonna put in my a leaf going kind of up right here. So I like to sometimes like just draw it and then very quickly use water to fill it in. And then you can pick up stronger color and drop it in. Now you can see that it was a little wet right there. It's bleeding a little bit, but that's okay. So I have one smaller leaf. I'm gonna do a bigger one kind of going angled this way. Now another thing that you can do is just use water to paint your leaf. And then when it's nice and wet, just drop it in, drop in that color, see what happens. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why I love this technique the most is because when you do it with water and then just drop in color, you're already going to have value variation within that section because some of the color is going to move, some of it is going to stay, there are going to be some areas that maybe it doesn't even hit, and that's okay. So. For me, I prefer that because it creates more visual interest and like an even wash that you just kind of work back and forth. It is a little bit tricky though because you really got to let go. You, you, you really just got to be like, okay, I'm putting in color here and I'm, I'm moving on. I'm not touching anything else, okay? So I did those two. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna do a little bit larger leaf. So using my six. You can kind of outline your leaf, fill it in with water, grab some color, whatever color you want. Ooh. Yep. That was oh. the ticket. Look at it. That was awesome. Look at that. And maybe like a little bit of blue in there. Oh, gosh. Okay, another thing that you guys can do is, if you're doing large leaves like this, if you wanna use your round 12 instead of your round six, feel free to. The nice thing about larger brushes is, one, the variation in line, and also, it's just a little bit easier for me to paint loose when it's big, when I'm using a big brush. So if I'm using this 12, and I grab some green, and I just kinda like, paint a leaf. Boom. Boom, drop in some color. Let's drop in some like yellow. I need oh. some I need some like fresh Cruise. yellow that hasn't been <laughs> turned to green. <laughs> Let's drop in some yellow and see what happens. Like look at that. Beautiful. See? You're not wrong about the whole color variation thing. Isn't it nice? It's very nice. Thank you. So when you're using different size brushes, play with them. Do some, even though these are smaller than our flowers, see what it feels like to do a leaf with a 12. See what it feels like to do a leaf with a round two. Whatever you like to use is your decision and there's no wrong answer. It's whatever you're comfortable with and whatever your style lends itself to. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here and I think what I might do is even though I have my green going this way, I think I'm gonna have my stem kind of go more this way and the detail lines go this way because I think I'm gonna put something here, like maybe an outline of leaf or something. But if I do the leaves this way going down and something there, that would feel really, really heavy. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have it go this way and then put something there. What yet? I don't know. Who knows? We'll figure it out when we get there. Okay, so since these were a little bit bigger, I'm gonna go with smaller, smaller leaves this way. So here's a little guy. Not only is it nice to have a variation in hue, which is color, but also in size. And even if you do like, I'm putting the paint and water down simultaneously, so this is kind of an even wash, 
you can still drop in color when it's nice and wet like that and get that that variation in color, value, hue. Hue and color are the same. It's fine. <laughs> hue and color. You meant hue, H-U-G-H, that one, yep. that one guy who paints sometimes. You might uh -huh. get what he likes to do. Exactly. Yeah. No, Keenan, get you get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> okay. And as you can see, I'm not putting my stem in yet. If you need to put your stem in so you know where your leaves are coming from, go ahead and put your stem in. Um, one thing that I do want to call attention to is I've noticed, and I've taught a few watercolor classes and done a few watercolor paintings. And when I see people put in stems, I think we know that stems are curved. And so we think when I'm like, put in a stem for your leaves, they do this. Uh-huh. It's always like a, because our head is like curvy, but I want you to think of stems curving more like curve, 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 curve. There's still a curve, but it's over the whole thing instead of like a kink. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So. We're going for a stem, not a vine. Yes, yeah. yes. And still even vines aren't necessarily that. What? Have I been looking at vines wrong my whole life? I don't, you need to go study some vines, Keenan. Okay. Okay, so I have my two and I'm picking up some color and I'm using my two because I want a thin line because I like thin stems. I really do. I think they're nice. And I'm just going to be like, okay, here's a stem. There's a stem. We'll connect this to here. Boop. And if you want to do a leaf kind of coming off this way. I feel like I need more yellow. Hmm. More I love yellow those greens. leaves on the bottom right. Yeah, didn't those, those turn out great? Just incredible. And maybe this guy is going over here. And I really like my leaves being a little wonky sometimes. And I think we get caught up on like, a leaf has to be this. Nope. Somewhere there is a wonky leaf. Yep. And there's so many types of leaves that if you do like a short wide one, a long skinny one, one with like a curl, maybe a caterpillar ate a chunk out of one, like they exist. Ah. So let go of all of that and just paint a leaf. I like that plan because then we can make our own leaves. Exactly. Yeah, and who says you, your leaf even has to look realistic? This is your world. Yeah, and who says it was, uh, maybe it wasn't on purpose, and then you can say it was on purpose. I've totally done that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is feeling really cool. I'm loving what's happening. I'm gonna do more leaves coming up this way. So I'm gonna take my two, and I really love how I got like a yellow green right here. So I'm gonna work to get that color. I'm gonna try to see what happens when I take just burnt orange into this. Mm. Ooh, that's a good, that's that a good green. Nice. Do you want to scoot that a little to the left? Oh, yep, sorry. No, that's okay, thank so you. So I just did a swoop of burnt orange in with my green that kind of all has mixed together. I'm gonna do a leaf going this way. Oh, I love that color, love it, love it. Let's drop some, <clears throat> let's drop some yellow in there. And maybe like a richer green at the base. Now, um, one thing, another thing that I've noticed is when I say drop in color, um, people like to do polka dots, which isn't bad. It's not bad to have polka dots, but sometimes the polka dots can distract from the actual leaf. And I just, if you do polka dots and they're not spreading, there's nothing wrong with taking your paintbrush and just whooshing it. Mm. So then that way you don't have polka dot leaves. Unless you want polka dot leaves, then ignore everything I just said. I've seen polka dot leaves. Have you? Yeah, but they look like they were like almost snacked on mm. by insects, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Or stained even by local greeneries. Local what? Greeneries, I don't, oh. I don't know the word. Okay, sorry that I called attention to it. It's okay, I have to I do a camera just... thing, please stop talking to me. <laughs> We're just gonna fade off talking, <laughs> pretend nobody noticed. <laughs> okay, I'm loving 
how this is turning out. Yes. I can't even handle it. Okay. So at this point, we're now on to our very last step, which is we're going to kind of look at our flowers, look at our leaves, look at the background and think, um, is there anything more I want to add? Um, what details can I add to this to kind of like enrich the painting? So I know that I mentioned that this area felt really, really bare and blank right here. Um, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, but I think I, I was going to do leaves, but I don't think that's the right move. I think I'm going to do a pink wash. So if this kind of happened naturally to you while you were doing the background on that pink blood in there a lot and you don't have a big white chunk, you don't need to do this. But I feel like there just needs to be something there. So I'm going to grab my 12 and I'm going to pick up some of this mixture, this pink mixture I have over here. It's not going to be a dark value. It's going to be a light value. And I'm just going to kind of fill it in. And also I'm going to let it touch my green, my leaves and let it get a little bit messy. And then you can go in and kind of just drop in some pinks and colors, maybe even some water, just to like see what happens. It's almost like there's rain making the colors bleed on this That's painting. what I've been you thinking know? this whole time, rain and the smoke in the beginning and then, ugh. And if you even wanna be like, Let's see what happens if I kind of like do a pink wash over here by these wet green leaves, do it. But I just want to warn you that green and pink, when they mix together, are going to make brown. So I don't think there's anything wrong with experimenting, but like if you're just like, this turned into a muddy mess, giving you a heads up that if you mix those colors too much, mm -hmm. they can make a muddy mess. But let's just like mess it up a little too though. Mess it up. Mess it up. Oh, doesn't that feel better? That feels so much better to me. I was hoping that you would ask what I thought yeah. before, but you did what I would have suggested. <laughs> and then I'm doing just a touch of green in there, like maybe there's a leaf back there, mm. maybe there's not. I don't know. And I feel like I can do with some pink up here too. So I'm really just messing this up. Yeah, just, just ruin it. Just all of the hard work you just <laughs> <laughs> I just think there's so much fun in touching an area with water and watching it move. Like there's so much joy in that. I accidentally touched this leaf. Look at that green, that's so cool. It almost made its own leaf. Like I'm not even mad about it. Like that is so great. And I'm not gonna be mad at watercolor for doing what it's supposed to do. Instead of saying that is not exactly how I wanted it, have no expectations and think, whoa, that was really cool. <laughs> you okay? <coughs> I just said something really <coughs> profound. Really <laughs> profound. I'm going to quote it and put it in a book and then put your name and then my name <coughs> so that I can use it as my own quote. Perfect. I literally, I don't know why I'm... <coughs> Keenan. It caught me off guard. Do you need water? There's no water in the area except paint water, and I'm not willing to drink it's that. It's non-toxic. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't drink this paint water. Good plug. Okay. Ooh, that feels like so much more interesting to me than the white space that was there before. And again, your painting might not have needed that depending on how much your leaves bled and your flowers bled and whatever. So allow yourself to look at your painting, make decisions. I will say that this area feels a little bit more bare compared to like all of the coolness that's going on over here. So what can I do? Uh, I'm not gonna go there yet. Where I am gonna go is, if you look at the reference photo, you can see that I did take my round two and do just some detail lines, like petals almost, like the hint of petals. Your flowers might not need that, but I'm gonna do it. Just make sure that you get a dark value so it actually shows up. And for this guy, I'm going to say, okay, here's like the edge of a petal here. Maybe it goes inside there. And here's one. And I'm kind of looking at where there are natural lines and edges in this flower and then kind of like reacting to them. 
but I don't want to do it so much that I take away from all of the interesting textures that are already on my paper. So here, this is like a really gorgeous uneven edge that I'm going to do a little line on. Now, as you can see, I changed my value as I went to the outside of this because it was a lighter value on the edges and I didn't want that super dark value to be against that light background because it would like feel a little like this. Does that make sense? Too contrasty? Too contrasty. I wanted my edges to be more closer in value to the value that's there but still noticeable. And maybe you're like, this is my first painting ever and I have no idea what you're talking about. That's okay. Just ignore what I'm saying. <laughs> I love these lines. Just a little hint. Yes. Now when it comes to this one, I feel like this one definitely had more of a tissue paper petal feel. I don't know if that one quite has that same feel. So what I'm going to do with my six is I'm gonna think about kind of more a rose shape instead of like a poppy shape. Like some poppies are like, like Icelandic poppies are like flowery, like tissue papery, and roses are kind of more circular and tight. Layered. Layered. Like an ogre. Like an onion. Oh yes. And you can take your six, and if you want to do like, just like this kind of textures, you can. I like that. And it's not a lot. I'm not going crazy here, you guys. I'm not trying to do a full detail painting on top of this. I'm just trying to give a little bit more information so our viewer can say, all right, I think that's a rose. Now in real life, would there be a rose next to a poppy like this growing from the same plant? Only if you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that feels good. I don't wanna to touch that anymore because I really like how that happened. The salt work that happened right here is so beautiful. It kind of created this like movement on both that I, I really, really love. Now what I'm gonna do here is after kind of looking at all of the things that are happening, I think I'm just going to do a wash so it's wet and a little hint of green, a desaturated green that I'm just gonna kind of let it bleed out. I don't want to do full on leaves. I just feel like that would be too much. And I'm just going to hint at some green back there. And that's it. So enough to give some information, enough to add a little bit of something, but not so much that you're like, whoa, you know? Whoa. And I did one more layer of dark. I wanted a little hint of something deeper. Yeah. Ooh, that looks good. Okay. It's crazy how that little hint changed it. It did, it did. And if you're not sure, if you're thinking, if I do a full on like big chunky leaf right there, that's gonna feel really heavy. I always like to do just light washes because it, it activates the space without taking over the space. Okay, and then if you wanna do some like green detail lines on your leaves, like here, I can take my two, and it might be it's still a little too damp that it's gonna bleed out. Some of it might be dry, like I think this one might be dry. It's gonna stay sharp. I also really love to draw using my paintbrush. So if I'm gonna do like, outline it a little bit, maybe it's only like I, one side. That is fantastic. It just gives it like, it's just a different style. And I, I personally am a huge fan of just like, and if you see my, my florals that I do um, in my own personal work, in my fine, fine art, I love to just kind of like sometimes outline things yep. with my paint. Just to like, like isn't that fun? It's, I, it, yes. <laughs> It's like what makes the leaf for me. Like I already loved leaves mm -hmm. for whatever reason, but then when you have the little outline, like I said, just for the flower, when the little outline, just a little hint. Yeah. It's like what, ha what happened? And if you have other materials that aren't watercolor, 
why not play with those too? Do you have a pastel? Do you have an oil pastel? Do you have an acrylic marker? Do you have some funky powders? Draw with those. Mm. Introduce them to your painting. I think sometimes we get in our head, we're like, well, if I add a pen or a pencil to this, is this still considered watercolor? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> but like, who cares when you're having fun? Who cares when you're playing? So like, if you have, you know, a cool, there's even like, I think we even have like gelato sticks or, you know, these, these things that you can kind of draw with and add textures, add marks, add something different to make it yours. Take that opportunity to use it and to explore. I got stuck thinking about the rules. Yeah. Because some other person that wanted to paint made up the rules so we can make up our own rules anyway. Yeah. So get some powder. I love the powder idea. Yeah. I felt like it just needed a hint of green over here mm -hmm. behind the leaves. And I think I'm done. Wow. I am so in love with how this turned out. This was so great. So again, I want to let you guys know that this is where you can explore and play other projects in this box. We are going to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more aware of what we're doing. This one, go wild and just see what happens. And the worst thing that can happen is it doesn't turn out and it's a piece of paper that you got to throw away. And then you got to paint it again. Bummer. Bummer. <laughs> Another hour of painting, <laughs> you know, like, so. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you can join our Facebook community. That's called Let's Make Our Watercolor. It's large, but it's such a great opportunity for you to share your work because we're all going through this together. We know what it's like, how scary it is to post something of your own. It's so vulnerable. But I think that we have arrived at this place in our society where we think that art is either a skill that you're born with or you're not because we don't share our mess ups. We don't share the messy middle. We don't talk about how scary it is to put something out there. Um, but I want to change that. I think that we should. And um, when we do that, when other people see courage, they it's easier for them to also act. And it's a great support where you can be like, I know that you're trying your best. I'm trying my best. We're just trying to learn. Let's learn from each other. I don't care how much experience you have. You still can always learn. If you're on Instagram, share it. We really want to see what you guys made. So you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. You can also check out what other people are making under that same hashtag. Give them some love. Yeah. Be like, you're awesome. You painted this and then you shared it. Like, go you. And uh, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at Let's Make Art.com. That's all. Bye.